Seven months, four months, three months, these are the decreasing preparation times for a SpaceX Starship flight. It's hard to find a similar rocket company that can achieve this. However, SpaceX and Elon Musk amazed us even more recently when he announced the new launch schedule for Starship, flight five in four weeks. This means that the time between Starship's fourth and fifth flights is under two months. Shorter than before, and particularly shocking to NASA, that's never achieved this with their own vehicles. Let's find out more in today's episode of Alpha Tech, and please don't forget to give us a like and subscribe to us if you enjoyed this video. Okay, after conducting a series of tower catching tests on the launch pad last month on July 9th, the company began transporting the booster for the fifth flight called Booster 12 to the launch pad. This process took three and a half hours and was confirmed by SpaceX through a post with fantastic photos on their X page. This is a sign that final preparations are underway. Furthermore, Elon also shared this post, once again affirming that Starship is getting ready for Flight 5. Typically, before a test flight, SpaceX will conduct a series of tests on both the first and second stages of the rocket. These tests include tank pressurization, static fire tests, and wet dress rehearsals. While Booster 12 has previously completed two cryogenic tests at Massey's outpost, it underwent tests for low temperature tolerance of its methane and LOX tanks in January. Therefore, with this rollout to the launch pad, it'll face the static fire test, one of the final tests before launch. The static fire test will take place quickly according to the upcoming road closure schedules. And even as this video is released, SpaceX may have already successfully conducted this test. When this test is successful, it's usually followed by a wet dress rehearsal in which the entire rocket is filled with fuel to simulate launch day. As for the partner of Booster 12, Ship 30, one of the newest Starship prototypes, that's undergoing significant upgrades. Now, SpaceX engineers are still carefully removing the remaining tiles from Ship 30. This isn't a random decision, but part of a meticulously planned upgrade. The main purpose of this is to install a new ablative material beneath the outer shell. Afterwards, they will replace the old heat tiles with new, more durable and efficient ones. This upgrade process is no small task. Over the past few weeks, engineers have had to replace nearly all 18,000 heat-resistant tiles. This is an incredible number, reflecting the complexity and meticulousness of the upgrade process. Looking closely at Ship 30, the spacecraft's nose is nearly complete with only a few tiles missing. However, we can notice that this area is not equipped with abrasive materials. Why so? The explanation lies in the presence of cryogenic liquid oxygen locks on the other side of the steel structure, creating an unintentional active cooling effect. The extremely cold locks absorbs heat conducted through the steel, potentially reducing the need for ablative material in this area. However, this design isn't without risks. As the locks absorbs heat, it may evaporate more quickly than desired, potentially requiring venting to maintain safe pressure levels. This could compromise the vehicle's landing capabilities as locks is used as the propellant for landing. Despite these potential issues, SpaceX appears confident in this approach, suggesting they've conducted thorough modeling and testing. If successful, this design could lead to lighter heat shields and increased payload capacity, potentially influencing future spacecraft thermal management strategies. The main body of the ship is also nearing the completion of the new heat shield installation. The only area still missing a significant number of heat-resistant tiles is the flaps. These flaps have been covered with a basic protective layer but do not yet have the outer layer of thermal tiles. Right next to it is the Mega Bay, a special area dedicated to the development and assembly of the Super Heavy Boosters. Entering Mega Bay, our first impression might be a sense of awe at the scale of the place. Although the space seems cramped, this is where the true power of Starship's program resides. In this bay, we can see three complete booster prototypes, along with parts of another prototype in the process of construction. This is where the giants are born, boosters capable of taking Starship beyond Earth's gravity. As Booster 12 departs, Booster 13 is also being prepared for its future mission. Since Booster 12 was developed in parallel with 13, it's likely that Booster 13 will be used in Starship's sixth flight. Standing among these giant machines, it's not hard to feel excited about the future of space exploration. 
The earliest will be the fifth test flight of Starship happening this August. This is considered the most daring flight to date as SpaceX plans to test catching the first stage booster with a launch tower's catching arms, an unprecedented effort in the history of the space industry, and it will be a significant step in developing the reusability of the rocket. Although testing the rocket catch with a launch tower is the biggest goal for the fifth Starship flight, even if successful, SpaceX still needs to conduct other critical tests in the near future. One of these is testing in-space fuel transfer with the second stage of the rocket. This is a key requirement in SpaceX's multi-billion dollar contract with NASA to land humans on the moon for the first time since Apollo. While SpaceX has confirmed plans to reuse the Super Heavy booster by catching it with a launch tower, similar details for the second stage of Starship remain sparse. In some initial tests of Starship, the second stage has been flown and landed using landing legs. However, it's still unclear whether this method will continue to be used in future flights. To predict the expected launch date, there are several important indicators to watch. These included announcements from the Coast Guard, the FAA, local officials in Cameron County, Texas, and the schedule of NASA's photo survey aircraft. This space agency carefully monitors each Starship flight to assess SpaceX's progress. Depending on the flight profile of the fifth flight, SpaceX could also receive a rapid launch license from the Federal Aviation Administration. Additionally, SpaceX is building a second launch tower at their facility in Texas. This is to create a redundancy for Starship flights, ensuring continuous launch capability even if one launch tower encounters problems or needs maintenance. This strategy reflects SpaceX's commitment to accelerating the pace and frequency of Starship launches. In short, this upcoming test flight is not only a significant milestone for SpaceX, but also for the entire space industry. It marks an advancement in the development of fully reusable rocket systems that are capable of reducing the cost of accessing space and opening up new possibilities for deep space exploration. The success of this flight could accelerate human plans to return to the moon and ultimately move towards Mars. Elon's long-term goal is to build a self-sufficient city on Mars. SpaceX's Starship rocket is a key tool to achieving this. SpaceX will colonize Mars, Musk said in a post on social media, adding, The key question is whether Earth civilization will be able to sustain its level of technology long enough for the colony to grow on its own, even if no resupply ships arrive. SpaceX said Starship is critical to creating a self-sustaining city on Mars. It suggested that on Starship, it would take just six months to reach the Red Planet. However, the window for a launch to Mars comes around only once every 26 months when the orbits of the two planets allow for the most favorable flight path. Mr. Musk has pinned his hopes on going to Mars by 2029 and to colonize the planet by 2050. However, this timeline has been scrutinized by researchers. A study published in Scientific Reports discussed the feasibility of SpaceX's human exploration Mars mission and found there are significant technological gaps in the plans. They conclude that SpaceX's mission plans to blast off to Mars by 2029 are not feasible with the info that SpaceX has currently given. However, researchers said if certain hurdles such as getting the nuclear reactors or the propellant systems ready and rescaled to make them smaller and lighter, then perhaps the first starships could be launched by the mid-2030s. NASA's hoping to send humans to Mars by the 2030s, as it's one of the only places the American Space Agency knows where life may have existed in the solar system and somewhere we can learn more about how our solar system formed. There are several things to consider, oxygen, food and water, as well as communication, shelter, and how we can roam the surface before making a journey to Mars happen. But with Elon and NASA's ambitions, we could perhaps see it happen in our lifetimes. That's all for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.